welcome back, lovely people. You've probably all been reading about the Boeing pickle fork. What is a pickle fork? And actually, why are Boeing in such a pickle? Unfortunately, this is not a laughing matter. The pickle fork is a major component that joins the fuselage to the wings of aircraft. On the Boeing 737, it's just behind the uh, rear wing assembly and is a vital component. It's also pretty easy to inspect. Normal maintenance checks would actually be able to see, you hope, any cracks in the top of the fork because it's under a flex load from the wing. Well, hang on, why is this happening? Well, these components do have a finite life and they do need checking, but the specifications for this part should be pretty long. Now let's talk about cycles. A flight cycle is a takeoff and landing, a pressurization, depressurization, i.e. just a flight. This is the way that an aircraft's age is really measured. The actual years in service are irrelevant. It's the number of cycles. So, how long does a pickle fork last? Well, it should last a long time, but first of all, Qantas found in aircraft over 30,000 cycles. It's probably, I mean, it's difficult to say, but it might be like a 15-year-old 737. They found cracks in these pickle forks. And when they looked even more carefully at their older fleet, they found a crack in an aircraft with only about 26,000 cycles. So the FAA issued a advisory directory in conjunction with Boeing. And they suggest that you look for cracks in the wing mounting section of aircraft of over 30,000 cycles. So this is what airlines are doing. Today in the news, a low-cost budget airline in Europe called Ryanair if you live in Europe, you've flown with them. <laughs> they exclusively use Boeing 737s, mainly the NG, the Next Generation 800 class. And they found pickle fork cracks. And here's my statement. Boeing, get your act together. In a recent report, a Boeing so-called whistleblower, but he was a Boeing safety inspector, pointed out that he found that 25% of the overhead oxygen bottles which might deploy in a depressurization in a cockpit in a 787 series didn't work. He reported upline to his managers, and they did very little. <laughs> the FAA was also contacted, and they spoke to Boeing, and Boeing said, we're on the case, and the FAA have dropped it. Well, hopefully Boeing are on the case, because we don't want no oxygen in a depressurization incident. Just to let you know, at, say, over 38,000 feet, you have seconds before you black out. You really have to don that mask and start breathing normally. And it gets worse. The FAA have discovered that in the South Carolina Boeing plant that there are missing parts. Now these missing parts are parts that were no good. They were suspect and not to be fitted on planes, probably by an internal inspection by Boeing, jolly good, but they can't go on a plane because they failed at that inspection. Where are they? Again, a whistleblower has said, due to pressure of work and profit, maybe these parts were fitted to planes because over 50 of them have disappeared. They're not in the garbage bin, and nobody knows where they are. Do you want to have a guess? So Boeing are having a really bad year, and they need to pull up their socks and do better. This, in my very humble opinion, is what they need to do. They need to be far more honest, put safety above profit, and when a staff member, especially a safety representative, actually says, I see something which I feel is unsafe, do something about it and honour your own staff. I mean, I'm sure lip service, they're saying they're doing all of those things, but look at the pickle that they are in today. The truth is out there. Mm -hmm.